All right, this is a how-to video on replacing the piston in a Hope Tech 3 brake lever. Now, I've posted a couple other videos about an issue I was having with these brakes, and I'll put links to those videos in this one if you'd like to go back and see why I had to replace the piston. But someone had commented and said that they wanted to hear about what was involved in changing the piston. And the piston that I'm talking about is right here. It's a little tough to see, but um, I'm not going to actually remove the piston just for this video, but I will talk through everything that's involved and the tools that you'll need. So the first thing you'll need to do is remove the lever itself, and that's held in with this pin right here. And on the end of the pin, there's a really small circlip that needs to be removed. And I didn't have a pair of pliers small enough to remove that, so the way I ended up removing it was I used two really small flat head screwdrivers like these to pry the clip open enough that I could slip it off of the pin. And it worked okay. It was a little fiddly and it took a couple minutes to do, but uh, I was able to remove it. I will just say that if you are going to to do that, just be careful that the clip doesn't pop off the pin and go flying across the shop because it is really small and it'll be hard to find if you lose it. So just be careful with that. Um, after you remove that clip, you then need to loosen up this grub screw right in here and you only need to loosen it. You don't have to actually remove it. And it's probably better if you don't remove it because like that clip, it's really small and would be easy to lose. But the reason you have to loosen that is because if you look on the diagram here, and this is available on Hope's website, by the way, but here's the grub screw. And that actually threads in and it tightens against the pin that holds the lever in place. And there's a groove in that pin, and that's where that grub screw contacts. So if you loosen that grub screw just a little bit, it's probably not gonna be enough to be able to pull the pin out. You'll need to remove that grub screw, or unthread the grub screw rather, uh, at least a turn, maybe two turns, just to be sure. And that should be enough to uh, be able to pull that pin out. Once you pull the pin out, this whole lever and cam subassembly can be removed and uh, just keep that all intact. Try to make sure you don't lose any pieces. There's uh, a spring in there with a couple brass plungers on the end and um, just be careful uh, you don't lose any of those parts. And also be careful, there's a couple bushings, uh, this flanged bush right here uh, just make sure those don't fall out and get lost either. Um, they're hard to see on the actual lever, but there's one right in here, and then there's another one on the bottom. Um, when I removed mine, they just stayed in place, but uh, just be aware of those and um, make sure that uh, they don't get lost. Once the lever's removed, then you can remove this screw here and the stop plate that actually holds the piston in and that screw it's a t10 head which is the same as the two screws that hold the lid on the master cylinder but what's different about it is that it's a security style screw so it's probably hard to see but there's actually a pin right in the center of that head of the screw, which prevents you from using just a normal T10 driver on that screw. So what you need to do is get a driver that has a hole in the middle of it, like the one on the left there. And uh, I'll show you the end of these drivers. So the one on the left has a hole in the middle of it. So 
you're able to actually fit that onto the screw. And I'm not sure why Hope used that type of screw in that location, but that's what mine had, so I actually had to get that special driver just to replace this piston. But it wasn't that expensive, uh, but that's just something to be aware of. Just check yours before you actually go to do this and make sure you have the right tool. Unlike that circlip where I was able to remove that without having the proper tool, I think that screw, you're, you pretty much have to have the right tool for that job, so just be aware of that. Once you remove that screw, then the stop plate can be removed and then the piston can be pulled out. Now, when you pull the piston out, you're going to lose some fluid, so just be aware of that. And uh, I replaced mine when it was still on the bike, so it was horizontal like it is now, and I lost pretty much all the fluid that was in the master cylinder. I guess if the lever is still installed on the bike, you could lay the bike on its side and then pull the piston out vertically, so you wouldn't lose nearly as much fluid. But you're still, even if you do that, you're still gonna wanna bleed the brakes when you're all done, but that would prevent you from losing as much fluid. And uh, this is the piston that I actually removed. So it's the piston, two seals, the spring, and it has this uh, little insert piece in the end of it here. And then the new piston, uh, I just slid that in. Uh, actually, before I did, I just dipped the piston and seals in some clean brake fluid just to lubricate the seals. Probably not required, but I felt it was a good thing to do. So I just lubricated those seals and then just slid the piston in, uh, reinstalled the stop plate, tightened up that screw. That screw doesn't have to be extremely tight. Just tighten that about what you would the uh, two screws that hold the lid on the master cylinder. And once you tighten that up, then you can reinstall the lever. Again, pay attention to these two flanged bushings. Just make sure they're in place. Reinstall the lever, the pin that holds the lever, and then you can tighten up uh, this grub screw. Um, this grub screw doesn't have to be very tight at all. Just nip that up so it's snug. And then just reinstall this circlip. Again, I just used the flat screwdrivers to do that and it worked okay. It was actually easier to reinstall it than it was to remove it. Uh, but just be careful with that. Make sure it uh, doesn't go flying across the shop and get lost. Um, but once all that's installed, the only thing left to do is just top up the master cylinder with fluid and just bleed the brakes because you're pretty much guaranteed to get some air in the line when you replace the piston like this. So just bleed the brakes uh, really good and make sure you run a lot of fluid through there and, and just make sure you get all the air pushed out. And then roll the diaphragm and, and just follow the proper procedure for bleeding the brakes and uh, should be fine. Um, after I replaced the piston in mine and bled the brakes, uh, they've worked perfectly ever since. So hopefully that was useful. And uh, the only other thing I'll add is that uh, the bike that these are installed on, I will be completely disassembling this bike here over the next couple months, uh, just stripping it down all the way to the frame, just going through everything to freshen it up. and. One thing I will be doing is replacing all of the bearings in the linkages of the frame. And I've done that before, but I can take some videos of that if anyone's interested in seeing that process. And I have some of the special tools that make that easier. And I've actually made some of my own tools that, that work pretty well for that. So if anyone would like to see that, I can do some videos of that or anything else. Um, if people want to see how things come apart or go together or, 
or see some close-ups of different things, just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll try to do that. So thanks for watching this one. Hopefully it was useful or at least interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.